View from the Gutters presents Singles Club, Episode 2. Welcome to View from the Gutters Presents Singles Club, the special mini show where we review an independent or small press comic book. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Singles Club. Once again, I'm your host, Tobias Panchin, and this week we're going to be looking at a comic called Paradox Girl, written by Katie Borquin with art by Yishan Lee. This book is published by Hana Comics, which is an imprint of a game studio called Hanako Games. Looking at their website, Hanako seems to primarily make visual novels and anime-inspired casual games. And this is, as far as I can tell, their first comic book. So, jumping straight into things, I enjoyed the heck out of this comic. Just looking at the cover, it's very clear that this is going to be a light-hearted story. It's a sunny day, the page is filled with bright colors, and you get an immediate sense that shenanigans are going to be par for the course. Uh, We're looking at about 16, 17 different Paradox Girls, all doing different things. Sunbathing, mowing the lawn. In one area of the page, she's flirting with herself. Uh, One version of her is doing the hair of another version, either her past or future. Uh, And right there, nice and big in the center of the page, there's a Paradox Girl that's just looking out at you and shrugging as if this is a normal day for her. And I wanted to point this cover out because I really like it. It does a good job of conveying the tone of the book, and it's generally a fun piece of art. Uh, And then immediately, this is backed up on pages one and two, where we get narration boxes, which tell us what the consequences are for violating causality, insofar as there are no consequences. Uh, Our main character, the eponymous Paradox Girl, has the superpower to travel through time. How'd she get that power? Well, she herself doesn't know, because she's altered her own history so many times. She gives us a few different possible backstories, but she has lost track of which one is currently canon. And we find this out, of course, as Paradox Girl is being rudely awoken by two of her future selves who are laughing loudly at the TV. Again, there's a really great setting of expectations here right from the get-go, as the author is showing us not just how the Paradox Girl's powers work, but what her life is like, and she's doing it without a lot of heavy dialogue explaining every little detail to us. There are literally two narration boxes on the first two pages, and this is a really good opening to the story, because we learn a lot about the main character without a lot of heavy dialogue and people explaining to us monologuing telling us like well this is what she does this is how it works this is how she got her powers no it's just i have the power to travel through time i don't know how i did it because i fucked with my own timeline so much and at the end of the day it really doesn't matter because it's not important to the story and we're just going to jump right into things and that really works for this book and i have to admit I was wary when it first showed up in my inbox. Time travel, as a rule, is something of a red flag for me. As a concept, it's something that's very easy to write poorly. It's often handled inconsistently, prone to massive plot holes, and as a storytelling device, it's it's really very overused. As often as not, when you see a time travel story pop up, it's as a lazy way to kick off or wrap up a story. You know, you get one of those predestination paradoxes where somebody shows up from the future and it's like, oh, you need to do this thing. Or people find a reference in an old journal that says, hey, you went back in time and you did this thing. And they go like, "Okay, well, I guess we're going to go do that thing. Especially in superhero comics, there's a tendency for time travel to be used as an excuse for the writer to blow up cities, to murder prominent characters, and generally wreck up things in a way that would be a big freaking deal if it weren't for the fact that you know everything is going to be put back the way it was with no lasting consequences. Either that or it's there to be used as a convenient solution to all the problems that the author can't fix otherwise, which I usually call the Bill and Ted effect. 
you're stuck in a corner. So the character writes themselves a note to come back in time later and set things up so that the exact solution to their problem is just off screen. And, you know, there are some good time travel stories, certainly, but as a rule, the presence of time travel is usually a warning sign that you're in for some cockamamie bullshit. And Paradox Girl is definitely cockamamie, but it is far from bullshit. Over the course of the issue, we see Paradox Girl working her way through a complete day, crossing and recrossing her own timeline and ending it about five hours before it began. We eventually see how the whole thing fits together in a way that makes sense, and it never feels like the author is just making up a time duplicate to move the story along. All of the Paradox Girls that you see eventually fall into place, and you get a sense of how all of her time travel fits together. And you get to see how in so many ways she is her own worst enemy. There is a villain in this issue, but how she interacts with that villain and how she wraps up that conflict is happened almost accidentally in and amongst her tussles with her own time-displaced selves. Having the ability to be anywhere, any when, Paradox Girl is eternally stuck in her current moment with no real concern for the past or the future, even when she's stealing her own breakfast or rudely waking herself up. The comic also gets a big boost from how well the art pairs with the story. It does a really good job of selling the character. You can definitely see the manga influence in this work, not just in the character designs, but in the layouts and the visual language of the art as well. I really like the way the Paradox Girl's time travel is depicted, where it has these cool and gentle lines that connect her from panel to panel whenever she's jumping through time. This is disrupted a little bit reading it digitally, because there are lines that go across pages, particularly two-page spreads, And that doesn't come across when you're flipping from page to page digitally and you can't lay the whole thing out. On the whole, this is a really fun book. It does a great job of conveying the story and the characters are well-developed and emotive. I would definitely read this series if it became an ongoing and I think it could easily find a home at a more established publisher. It's definitely worth dropping two bucks on to check out and support some independent creators. And you can grab this either from their website at ParadoxGirl.com or I believe Comixology. And just like last time, we're going to throw some preview images up on the website. So I recommend having a look at ViewFromTheGutters.com, checking out ParadoxGirl.com, and grab it for yourself. I recommend having a look. Thanks for listening, everybody, and we'll see you again soon on the next episode of Singles Club. Thank you for listening to this presentation of View from the Gutters. View from the Gutters is featured on theouthousers.com and the Comics Podcast Network. Keep up to date with everything that we're doing on our website at viewfromthegutters.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And if you enjoyed the show, please leave us a review on iTunes as it does help new listeners find our show. Thanks for listening, everybody. And as always, keep reading.